So, William, from the institutional investor's perspective, what are the theme strategies specifically in the alternative investment space that you find interesting and uh, for 2020? Yeah, so great question. I mean, I think what we see is there's continued institutional investor appetite for alternatives, and you're going to continue to see um, increased allocations to them. In particular, some of the areas that we're looking at pretty closely are real assets and trying to build on our existing portfolio and real estate um, infrastructure and, um, you know, and, and as well as alternative credit and seeing a, a big opportunity there as the private equity landscape continues to expand and being able to finance a lot of those acquisitions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from the uh, manager selection perspective, yeah. I hear a lot that people are looking for a new generation, looking for new managers, but your model is different in a, in a way that you help existing uh, established managers to kind of reinvent their business model. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, our, our model is, it, I think it's pretty unique. I mean, we, we are a multi-affiliate model that, that you, you have seen out in the marketplace, but one of the things that we do that's different than a lot of others is we bring our affiliates in much closer to the core than some of the other multi-affiliate managers will do, in that we centralize a lot of the, the core functions or the control functions, um, as well as we will augment or help with distribution and bring our distribution capability of a trillion dollar asset management firm into these, into these smaller boutique managers. And what that allows them to do is any manager that is either facing an intergenerational transfer, has a next generation that is ready to take over, but wants to you know, be part of a larger institution and also get access to conversations that they may be getting shut out of as some of the larger alternative managers are expanding their scope and getting into alternative asset classes. They might, some of these boutique managers might be finding it harder to have the proper institutional level discussions that they want to have and get into new LPs and that's one of the areas that we can provide um, new access and capabilities for them as they look to grow. Being a big institutional level firm and working with established managers, you still pay a lot of attention to innovation and to bringing new technology uh, into your, uh, your portfolio. Um, can you talk to me about your uh, venture part of your business and how you work with emerging technology and uh, new uh, technology advancements? Yeah, so in that, that's an area where we recognize there's pretty dramatic change happening in how technology is impacting not just the asset management business, but also any of our asset classes in which we invest. And one of the things that we've done with this is to really look at how we can invest, not really to, not really directly in companies, but partner with venture capital funds. And we have a, a small selection of funds that we have partnered with that we know can provide particular insights, both in terms of the asset management industry, as well as some of the areas in which we invest and take those insights that we glean from them and use that to facilitate either some of the strategic development that we do or surface actionable opportunities that we can take both on behalf of our business as well as some of the areas in which we invest and try to stay as much on the cutting edge of the curve as we can. Great. In terms of new technology, uh, can you name any specific sectors that you're, you're like in terms of application of new technology? In terms of application of new technology, I'd say one of the most active areas for us is exploration around alternative data and how that might be leveraged with us. In particular, you know, AI, which is a, a bit of a buzzword these days, but it has tremendous um, a broad reach and tremendous transformational potential, both in terms of the new data sets that are now emerging from natural language processing to image recognition, um, you, you name it, that it, it all of a sudden takes a lot of unstructured data that's out there and makes it a, ingestible into our investment algorithms, as well as you can then start to think about how all this, you know, machine learning algorithms will be able to change the way that you do the investment process. And so we're, you know, still early days for a lot of this and I think the technology needs to advance quite a bit before it actually gets to a place where it's gonna ultimately find its way into the mainstream. Uh, but it's something that we're paying pretty close attention to. Great. Thank you so much. Great, thank you.